In this section, we're going to start with the basics of D3. We're not going to create anything fantastic. Before we can create complex graphs and charts, we need to understand the core D3 API. So let's get some things set up. Right now, I'm inside a new directory. I want you to create a new folder and point your editor to that directory. If you're using Xamp, make sure you create your directory inside the htdocs folder. You don't have to name it anything special, just keep it simple. I'll be using WebStorm Server for this. In the resource section of this lecture, I provide a zip file that contains some starter files. Drag and drop the contents of that zip file into your directory. What you'll end up having is two files. The index.html file just contains a basic HTML structure. There is one important thing I want to highlight about this file, and that's setting the character set to UTF-8. We'll be dealing with a lot of data and functionality, so this will ensure that the browser will understand the code D3 generates. Then there's the app.js file, which is just an empty JavaScript file. I call my file app.js, but you can name this whatever you want. Once again, just keep it simple. We'll be modifying these two files soon enough. Once you have the basic files and folders set up, let's actually add D3. In the resource section of this lecture, I provide a link to the GitHub repository for D3. If you're not familiar with GitHub, then that's fine. GitHub just provides a place for developers to host and share their code with other developers. There are a couple of ways to download and include D3 into your project. I find the easiest way is to just use the CDN they provide. There are two versions here, and they're the exact same thing, except for one. The standard version includes the file as it has been written. The .min version, as you can see here, includes the same code as the standard version, except all the indentation and whitespace has been completely removed. This is useful for when you're releasing your work onto production. It allows for faster loading times on your web page. The only problem is that the file is hard to read when it comes to development. Generally, as a rule of thumb, you use the standard version when you're in development. This allows you to open up the file and easily read the code to better understand what's going on. Once you're finished writing your script, then you just change this to the .min version for production. Min is short for minified. All right. So I'm just going to copy and paste this one line of code into my HTML file like so. For this course, we'll be using version 4.11. If you see a higher version, then feel free to use it. All code we write will be compatible with future versions as well. That's another great thing about D3. It's very easy to upgrade from version to version with minimal breaking changes. Before we continue on, I do want to highlight one thing. If you've ever used D3 in earlier versions, then you're probably used to including one library. Usually most libraries, you just include one file and you're set. However, recently D3 has split itself up into various files. If you were to go back to the GitHub repo and scroll up, you'll find a link to the user's profile, which is D3. Under this profile, you'll see all the libraries uploaded by them. In this case, all D3 related code is placed here. When D3 first started, it was a basic library to deal with creating SVG elements through JavaScript. As it grew, the file size became alarmingly large. The file size was simply too much just for including D3, especially if you only planned on using some of the basic graphs. The developer behind D3 decided to break D3 into various components with each feature into its own library. This is great because now you only have to include code that you plan on using. The file we've included includes everything out of the box. This will save us some time from having to include every single bit we need. The trade-off is that the page may load slower than normal. Throughout this course, I'll be sure to tell you what libraries we're using and where you can find them. For now, we'll be using everything. The last thing I want to do is just include my app.js file below the inclusion of the D3 script. Let's check if everything is working. I want you to boot up your server and then view this page. For me, it's as easy as going to view, open in browser. You should see an empty page. You should check the console tab of the developer tools to make sure you're not getting any errors. All right, so we have everything we need. In the next lecture, we'll start coding everything.